wave weather turn our thoughts to polo and the first game of the London season is being played at the famous Ranelagh Club between Friar Park and Wickham. A game of hard hitting and hard riding and a joy to watch. Naturally the ponies kick up the turf a good deal. So at the end of the game, the holes and lumps have to be flattened out. Another equally distinguished gathering is to be found at Roehampton for the final of the Open Challenge Polo Cup. The teams are Panthers and Lady Arbla. Winners are Panthers, and I for one am very pleased because it's much easier to pronounce. Victors by nine and a half goals to three. Wintry weather notwithstanding, the great summer game is in full swing at Roehampton, where the Whitney Cup final brings the 12th Lancers face to face with the Panthers. The Lancers are the team wearing blue with a yellow hoop. King's Indian orderly officers were interested spectators of the game, but no doubt longed for a little more of their familiar sunshine. The bell rings for the end of the chuck up, but the game goes on until the ball goes out of play. Panthers, with the bigger handicap, had the best of a fast game and proved eventual winners of the Whitney Cup, presented by Lady Zia Wernher. The other great game of the horse is polo, only their ponies. The Maharaja of Kashmir's team visited the Aldershot command and won a fast game by 11 goals to 5. Polo is a rich man's game, as we who watch well know. But the little dog says, why can't I play? Movie celebrities were on hand for the charity polo match at Santa Monica. Faye Ray, Dolores Del Rio and Virginia Bruce were interested spectators. And of course there was Mary Pickford, while a pair of dark glasses hid the face of Constance Bennett. But to the polo, the teams are red and white. And prominent among the reds is our old friend Will Rogers, too busy to wisecrack. The rival captain is Spencer Tracy. Number two on the red side is Will Rogers' son Jimmy. And the commentator is Eddie Cantor. We're looking up. Jimmy picked it up, shot it to his old man. It's about time he did something for his father. When Will Rogers got the ball, there was no sign of his famous lackadaisical manner. And he raced his team home to victory. A win for the Reds and charity too. Ponies were on the move at the Beaufort Club near Bath. This was the international polo trial. America v. Beaufort warming up for the Westchester Cup. The visitors are wearing white. The American team won by 11 goals to 8, which was very sad for us. But of course, a lot of people have had to give up their polo since Chamberlain put tuppence on tea. England are facing the rest in weekly polo trials to select the international side for the Westchester Cup against America. Matches for the Cup have been played in the United States since 1921, but this year Britain will be able to watch the match of the season in this most exciting of all games in the new stands built for the public at Hurlingham. Of all the sport that stirs the imagination, there is no more thrilling game than this, and the Westchester Cup matches this year should be packed with thrills. Ponies of England and America paraded at Hurlingham as the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester entered for the Westchester Cup. 
the ex-king of Spain was also there, with thousands of others to watch the game. America played in white, England in blue. The match consisted of seven chuckers of eight minutes each, and each one packed with hard riding, hard hitting and the will to win. At first it seemed as if the Americans, holders of the Westchester Cup since 1914, would have a runaway victory, for in the early part of the game they led by seven goals to three, but England crept up to seven all. Once again, America went ahead, 8, 9, 10, 7, and again England pulled up, but America finally won a magnificent game, 10 goals to 9. The polo for the Westchester Cup was postponed also on account of rain. As usual, government British news were on the spot, but unfortunately in this case it was only a spot of rain. But here, as at Lord's, one diehard came out. With the help of a brandy and soda and a good umbrella, he sat and waited for the Indian summer. Favourite game with the film stars and all the colonies here. Charlie Farrell, Frank Borzage and Johnny Mac Brown might even speak to you unless Joe E. Brown swallows the microphone. Gloria Swanson sponsored the teams. I don't know what that means unless she paid for them. And Joan Crawford throws in the ball for the game to start. There's Bob Montgomery, believe it or not. And left to right, Barbara Stanwyck, Francho Tone and Mrs. Crawford Tone. It's a fight to a finish. And the winning team gets the cup handed over by Joan and Gloria. Polo, which is a sort of mounted golf, came into the news with an exciting game on the Meadowbrook International Field. America Dark Shirts versus the Argentines. Watch the slow motion shot of the last spectacular goal as Argentine triumphed by 21 to 9. The Duke of Gloucester played number one for the Air Force when they met the Navy for the Duke of York's Cup at Ranelagh. The game was exceptionally fast and the Royal Duke's hard riding and hitting was a feature of the match. But in spite of all the Air Force efforts, victory went to the Navy. The cup was presented by the Duchess of Gloucester to their captain, Lord Louis Mountbatten. Hurlingham. There was a garden party at the famous club when a team representing India played a team representing the rest of the world. India won by nine goals to six, and the cup was presented by Queen Mary. Long Island. New York society flocked to Meadowbrook to watch an international match. To play polo well, you have to be able to ride like the wind and fall like the rain. But there were so many socialites and film stars present, the players came over dizzy and came down in showers. Weather remains cold, but that doesn't delay the start of the most famous of all hot weather games. At Hurlingham, the tournament season opened with the first round of the Whitney Cup. The two teams are Summary's House and Knaves. And in high-class circles, those names mean more than Preston North End and Huddersfield. It was too early in the season to expect to see any sparkling displays of form. But the ponies kicked up the turf as well as ever, and it all had to be put back. These are the amateurs, and these are the professionals. 
Summary's house received six goals on handicap and they scored four to beat Knaves by ten goals to five. In the cup final at Wembley, they only got one goal, but of course, footballers are only the poor blooming infantry. Quite the smartest event of the season is the polo match at Sydney Sports Ground between speedway riders and our drivers. Two jolly fine teams, too, and magnificently mounted. Australian polo ponies, of course, are quite famous. These are the long-eared type. They use the large ball, considered by some to be easier to hit. By some, bad luck, sir. And here's a spirited attack. Very spirited. Just look at the way they handle those donk, uh, those ponies. It's a goal. Well held, sir. Engine trouble. More carrots. Go at the ass. Go at the ass. Go at the ass, Amanda. And now for the extra chucker. And what a chucker. The winner receives a valuable trophy. 22 carats. California have picked American team met a crack side of British polo players at Monterey Park in a tryout to wrest the International Cup from America. Film star Jack Holt was a referee. The game was marred by a serious accident to Captain C.T.I. Roa, who unfortunately succumbed to his injuries. Summer sometimes steals upon us while we're still in winter pants, and this was a day that took a trip right out of the top of the thermometer. So our cameraman went to Roehampton to get a proper slant on a summer game, polo. It's the final of the Whitney Cup, and the team's engaged are Juggernauts and Adsdean. Adsdean are the team with the white sash. It'll be some time before they have to take Wembley to hold all the spectators for this game, but polo really is worth watching. In the warm sun, with the rhythmic beat of hooves on the crisp turf, it's a real pleasure to sit and watch eight rich men sweating. <laughs> the handicaps of the two sides were equal, so it was level pegging and it was a hard-fought game. But victory finally went to Ads D by the odd goal. The cup was presented by Lady Louis Mountbatten. There was royal blood in both teams at Ranelagh for the Duke of York's Challenge Cup. The Duke of Gloucester was playing for the Air Force, while the Navy side included Lord Louis Mountbatten. The cup was presented by the present king in 1928 when he was Duke of York. Since then, the Navy have won seven times and the Air Force three times. It was a hard-fought game and Navy proved triumphant once more by four goals to three. The cup was presented by the Duchess of Gloucester and Her Royal Highness performed the little function in her usual vivacious and charming manner, handing the trophy to Lord Louis Mountbatten. Colourful South American visitors to Cowdery Park, Sussex, were the attendance of the polo ponies to be used by Argentina in the final of the Coronation Cup tournament. And gracing one of the biggest crowds ever to watch polo in Britain were the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh, who himself was playing during the afternoon. The Coronation Cup final was decided over six chuckers, or periods, of seven and a half minutes each. At the end of the fourth chucker, Argentina had galloped to a 5-1 lead. Here's one of their goals coming now. England fought back strongly, but Argentina received the cup from the Queen, winning by seven goals to six. Later, the Duke of Edinburgh, number four, rode out as a member of Cowdery Park to play Whip Hill in the Novices' Cup final. During the match, there were frequent heavy showers, but the Queen disregarded them as, sheltered by an umbrella, she watched her husband in action on the polo field for the first time this season. Lord Cowdery himself was in fine form, scoring three goals. And later, with Prince Philip, received a victory tankard from the Queen. 